and privilege for the first time to introduce a high-ranking IFD politician in Denmark. And to my knowledge, it's the first time that an AFD politician delivers a speech in Scandinavia. <laughs> to me, it's especially thrilling because I have worked at this project for quite a while. <coughs> and because I have followed the IFD since it was established in the spring of 2013, when the present speaker, or the speaker today, joined the party. Mr. Brister, uh, who was chairman of the party's branch in Bavaria until he was elected at the general elections in September, is known to be a sharp rhetorician. And his critics uh, blame him for being polemic and conflict-seeking. And he's one of the hate figures of the left in Germany, and I know that he likes that. Regularly, he writes articles for magazines and newspapers in Germany and abroad. He's also a treasured guest in uh, RT television, which is broadcast Europe-wide, where he is a commentator in German, in German internal affairs. He's also of the opinion that the Islam is incompatible with Western values and that inter integration efforts are futile. Instead, he advocates repat repatriation. Und jetzt, Herr Brüstern, sind Sie dran? Enttäuschen Sie uns nicht. Wir freuen uns sehr auf Ihre Rede. Ja, lieber Herr Jensen, dear Mr. Jensen, our dear friends from the Danish Verein, thank you very much for the invitation. And thank you that you come back from the lunch break, you know, it's <laughs> the attraction is there and you come back. So now for me it's a challenge to speak now, it's uh, the biological gap when everybody after, after the lunch won't sleep, you know. So I would try to keep you away from, from sleep uh, for some 15 minutes and uh, I will be glad if you then I would start a discussion with me. Uh, the, I, I am very happy that you invited me to Volkefest for Freiheit, because uh, you didn't mention it, but uh, I emigrated with 16 from the communist Czechoslovakia to Germany, and the motto of my life is the fight for fra for Freiheit, for Freiheit, and it's even the motto on my on my website. So I feel uh, very connected to you <laughs> and uh, to this event today. I was asked to speak about the European dimension of the migrant crisis. I will do it very briefly. I would like to pick up three points. I will speak about the current situation, especially in Germany. I would like to talk about the differences between the Eastern Middle European countries and the Western European countries, how they are handling the crisis. And third, of course, we should look all together for the solutions of this crisis. So the first point, how, how did it start and what are we now experiencing today? For us, for Germans, uh, the point of no return was summer 2015. And we are calling it when Angela Merkel did open the borders. And allow me, you know, I, I come with my wife to Copenhagen already at Friday and we enjoyed uh, the town. It's really very nice town. And I said, we saw that this is the Midsummer Fest. And we were told that Midsummer is also the Hexenverbrennung, the traditional <laughs> burning of the wishes. So maybe you should have invite Angela Merkel. To <laughs> and we would have some uh, problems less. <laughs> But still, uh, we, we experienced this opening of the borders and uh, some quite two millions of migrants come without, without any controls to Europe. And what we experienced in the weeks, months and years after was uh, rising a crime and especially 
terrorist attacks, terrorist attacks in Paris, in, 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 in France, in Belgium, in Germany, you know, in, in the heart of the German capital, in Berlin, 12 people were killed by an Islamic terrorist who come in this migration wave to Europe. So this is the situation today. And imagine what, what is happening here. As I emigrated 30 years ago from Czechoslovakia to the Western Europe, I couldn't imagine that if I would like to meet people like you, everybody, friendly people, middle and the countryside of Denmark, that we will be checked by security checking. <coughs> so, like like a terrorist party. We are not the terrorists. The terrorists are outside, you know, this is the point. So what we are facing is and this is the motto of, of, of this event. Um, we are losing our freedom. And what we are fighting is not against the people who are coming in, but we are fighting for our freedom. <laughs> What my colleague already uh, mentioned is, of course, we are facing a massive Islamization of Europe because the most uh, migrants who come from the Far East are Muslims. Um, and uh, of course, this is a problem because Islam as is a religion, we, we always say as, that the religion is free for anybody. If, if it's taken like we Europeans take uh, religion, that it's something private. You are free to be Buddhist, Islam, whatever. But the problem with Islam is that it's connected with the ideology, with the Sharia. And there we are saying clear, this is not compatible with our European heritage and this is not compatible with our European way of life. I was asked how the migration crisis uh, started and we have see we have to see that there are geo geostrategical reasons and especially um, the negative role played the USA I, I have to admit it uh, in spite of I, I like the USA for me USA were a very long time the yeah the country of freedom but the foreign policy of the United States of the last year uh, played a very critical role because if you imagine what happened in the years before 2015 and the promises of, of the Arabic Spring, you know, especially from somebody who is coming from Czechoslovakia, the Arabic Spring, it, this is an association with the Prague Spring, you know, and then you think, oh, poets like Václav Havel will be presidents in those countries and everything will be fine, we will get democracy there. And the opposite happened, you know, and no one of those countries where we were promised that they will become democracy, either Tunisia or Egypt, you know, or even Libya, is not democratic. The opposite happened. The countries are destroyed. In Egypt, there is a military dictatorship now. <laughs> Libya is completely, completely destroyed. There is no peace in the country. And the mechanism that used to work in the years before uh, that are completely destroyed. Libya, for example, had a bilateral treaty with Italy and also an, a treaty with the European Union to stop migrants on the southern border of Libya. And it took us a really low range of money. The it Italian were paying something, they were sending some, some troops and some equipment to the European Union too, but it was not a really expensive deal, but the migrants were kept out of Libya. Now, they are coming all from, from Africa through Libya to Europe, to Italy. And uh, we, we see this as a very critical point in the, in the foreign policy. And the second point is what is happening every day, that NGOs paid by Soros Foundation and others are driving with ships in the Mediterranean and breaking law. They are taking the migrants <coughs> from the International Sea or even from the Libyan coast, just a few miles from the Libyan coast, and shuttling them, transporting them to Europe. So of course this is clear, this has to be stopped, 
we are going to stop this illegal migration. I am very proud that the new Italian government said, okay, this will be stopped finally in the next weeks. And dear friends, I don't know how is it in Denmark, but uh, in Germany we have a very uh, big problem with uh, public, especially public media, but also with, uh, with, uh, with the private media, because in an in, uh, independent survey, uh, which was done by the Journalist Association, about 80% of the journalists admitted that they are voting for left-wing parties. So if you have 80% of journalists left, you have a hard life if you are right. <laughs> yeah? And uh, this, is, this is just, just the bottom line, you know. Um, we are facing a massive, really massive media war against all the parties which are middle or which are, which are right. And uh, we are described as, as extremist and, and ra far right, and I, I don't know why. Very often when I'm reading articles about myself, I cannot believe it that it should be myself, you know. Yeah. I was always looking like, who is this person? I, it's, it's doesn't fit to the reality. But um, it, it is the media, media reality uh, nowadays. And uh, I am, am speaking about that uh, because this is a really the most important point. And you are, you are seeing it also on the topic because um, the US president, uh, Mr. Trump is also taking this topic very often. He is uh, calling the media fake news. And the media, they hate it, you know. I, I, I know it because we are telling them also they are fake news. And they no, no, we are not fake news. And we, are, we have a German expression, Lügenpresse, yeah? and they hate it too, you know. So, no, we are not lying, you know. And we say, okay, maybe you don't lie always, but sometimes you just forget to say something, you know. <laughs> and it, it's, it's enough. Yeah? And sometimes you turn the truth from from different angle. And um, um, just imagine what is what is happening very often if if the migrants are displayed. We are facing always emotional pictures. It's just two days old. The, the problems from, from the US, from the border, from the Mexican-US border. What picture have you seen? A small child with the big eyes, you know, crying. And then the leftists ask, do you want this child cry? <laughs> of course everybody says, no, I don't want. You know, it, this, is, this is emotion. And we are always <laughs> arguing on, on a rational way and saying, hey, this child has parents. And the parents know that they are going illegally somewhere across the border. They could stay in their own country. They don't have to cross a border illegally, but they do it. They are responsible for the child, not us. We as a German politicians and you as Danish politicians, we are responsible for our country. We are responsible for Europe. We are responsible for you, for our people, and we take care for our people. This is our job. What we are also facing is, and I think this is uh, not an accident, this is by purpose, uh, mixing, always mixing the question of political asylum, helping refugees, real refugees, and m mass migration. In Germany, all the migrants, there are 98% of all the people are migrants, but they are called Flüchtlinge. Yeah? It starts with the words, and this is a typical leftist strategy. This is, this is Frankfurter Schule, you know, 1968. Just, this is a fight about the expressions and a perversion of the expressions. Because if, if, you, have, if you have migrants, <coughs> economical migrants, and you call them political refugees, you know, you turn it vice versa, because nobody in Germany is against um, helping political refugees, you know. Uh, the Germans, they have really a big heart. They, they showed it several times in the history. They helped a lot of people now after 1945 who come from the East. They helped the Hungarian people, 1956. They helped the Czechoslovakian people, 1968. They took a hundred, hundreds, 
from uh, people from Yugoslavia in the 90s, thousands. Yeah. So, so the Germans, they really like to help and they help. But what is happening now, this is not a migration of people who need, who are politically persecuted. It's a clear economical migration. And we can, we can, I, I can show you, no, it's just a very, very easy example, because if you are coming from Syria or from Iraq and you are saying you are prosecuted in a political way, you, are, you, you fear you are running f for your life, then you are in security when you are in Turkey. You don't need to go for that 3,500 kilometers, crossing seven borders, you know, uh, being in countries where you and me are doing holidays, like Croatia or Austria. <laughs> but they are doing that. And they don't stay in Croatia, they don't stay in Austria. Why? The countries are safe, they are even nice, you know. No. They're going to Germany or to Sweden because of the level of the payments of the social security. And this is a clear proof of, of the fact that they are economic, they are <laughs> economic, um, um, economic migrants and not political refugees. So we have to uh, <laughs> very clearly uh, make, make a border between those two uh, groups and separate those two groups and handle they in different way. What we are experiencing instead is uh, the narrative, especially of Angela Merkel and of, of, of the current, yet current German government, uh, which are, who are, <laughs> you understand it, you know, <laughs> maybe it is even not anymore, I don't know, I, <laughs> I'm not so up to date, so, uh, but still, um, uh, the, the German government under Angela Merkel is saying uh, we need a European solution. Uh, this is the big headline, European solution. And then the second one, and it sounds like in socialism uh, 30 years ago, we need solidarity, yeah? solidarität. Yeah? And again, uh, what, what they mean is uh, Zwangsverteilung, so enforced distribution of migrants across Europe. How pervert is this, you know, if you say, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, uh, we are true Europeans and, and we have a European community. And I, I say by, by purpose, not European Union, you know, because the European Union is something very political and is connected to Brussels. But the people of Europe, they get together to a European community because we have common values we have common history and and we said okay we want to we, we, we are going to live together in this continent on this continent with those people and I cannot imagine what will say the Spanish with 50% unemployment with the young people or the Italian with 40% unemployment of the young people if some Angela Merkel will say okay I will send you some some migrants, some Muslim migrants into the Catholic Spain, and I will call it solidarity, okay? <laughs> so this is the perversion of the, of the European idea. And uh, I, say, I say it again and again, uh, since two years, Angela Merkel is destroying Europe. Ang And Mr. Jensen uh, said it in, uh, at the beginning. I was I was hated by the media, uh, by the leftists for saying this, you know. And uh, yesterday, the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung had a headline: Angela Merkel spaltet Europa. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we are winning. We are winning. So of course, uh, the, the same thing is with more integration. Ah, sorry. This is not our duty to integrate somebody uh, into our uh, community. You know, uh, I can I can say it on my own uh, history. You know, when we f flow from the Czechoslovakia, from the communist regime, we flow to the nearest country to Bavaria. So I crossed just one border, and then we were safe. You know, so I didn't continue to 3,500 kilometer or to Island. <laughs> so we stay in the first country, and. What we have done was uh, 
We said, okay, <coughs> we want lift, lift here in this country. So what have, what have we to do? At first, learn the language. And then second, look for a job, you know, just to integrate into the society. So it, 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 this is not the duty of the society. It's not the duty of the state to say, oh, I take care for you and, and I will try. You know. So every migrant has the duty to try to integrate himself into the society and not uh, in the, the opposite um, mechanism. But what I experienced 30 years ago was a um, state which kept us in a dependence of the state, who was enforcing us to receive the money, who was forbidding us to work. And I didn't understand it, you know. Those days I was just like, this, this is crazy, you know. Outside are driving German people in the cars and saying, fucking Azulans, you know, yeah, they are living from our money. We didn't want it, the money, but the government was enforcing us to stay in, 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 in this, uh, in this Aslantenheim and, and so on. Now I understand. This is a big business. This is a big business because one migrant costs 35,000 euro a year. And this is just the lowest rate, you know, if he says he is just under 18. And they are doing it often, you know, saying they are uh, under 18. It costs up to 60 or 85,000 euro a year. And from this money, just a very slow part, a little part is the migrants are receiving, you know, directly as, as a cash. The most money goes to the companies who are building the refugee camps, who are running the refugee camps, who are delivering the food, who are delivering the clothes, who are keeping, so, so the biggest, um, company, the, the biggest organization which uh, gives work in Germany is Catholic Caritas. The, and I, I have nothing against Catholic Caritas, it's also the Arbeiter Wolfhard which is connected to the socialists. So it, it is, is a, you know, for them it's a win-win, you know, it uh, doesn't matter who is on the, on the power, if the socialists or the Christian Democrats, uh, they are spreading the taxpayers' money to their to organization which are connected to them. And that's, that's the reason why the people are waiting for a year for, for, for the decision, if, if uh, for the asylum decision and so on and so on. So if we want to change uh, this system, we have to establish very fast, very, very fast decisions on the borders. Yes, will you come in or no, you don't come in. Like the Swiss, the, the Swiss, they are able to do it in 48 hours, and the Swiss are not famous for to be quick, you know, so, so if the Swiss can do it, uh, we can do it too. Now I was asked, um, how does it come that the Eastern European countries have so different uh, position in the migrant crisis uh, than the Western <coughs> European? And uh, uh, you know it, you know, the, the uh, Western European politicians, they, they treat them very, uh, in, a, in a very arrogant way. Uh, even the European Commission is, is uh, saying, oh, they are, they are not the true Europeans and, and stuff like this. And I think uh, the opposite is true, you know. Uh, we as IFD, Alternative for Deutschland, we have the most uh, sympathizers voters in the eastern part of Germany. And uh, this, the explanation is the same why the Eastern countries uh, are so very critical against, against the migration policy. But the reason is very simple. The people in, the, in, in socialism, they experienced already one time that there was an official truth spread by the official media telling, explaining some virtual reality but the normal life was different. They know it. You know. At those days, it was like, uh, yes, uh, we fulfilled the fifth-year plan for 104 percent. Everything is great, you know. And the next day, you went to a shop, and the toilet paper was old. So, so you know, there is something, something not, uh, not really 100 percent, you know. And, and now it's it's like saying, oh, we saved uh, Greece. 
everything is fine in Greece. Uh, and we saved our currency. Euro is a really great currency. Uh, we, we don't have any problems, you know. And, uh, and, and, and in, your, in your real life, you, you're just make, oh, looking, oh, this is, uh, we, are, we are saving uh, Greece for eight years and the people in Greece are still poor. The only thing which was saved are the, the foreign banks. Uh, which were engaged there, but not the uh, Greece people, you know, and and it's the same with the currency. So, so, so the people from Eastern Europe, they they have a, a really a good feeling for it, if if uh, the officials are lying to them, and it's it's the same with the migrant crisis. So when 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 the governments, uh, especially the foreign <coughs> governments, are saying, yeah, we need the migrants, they say, well, <laughs> we, we don't need them, you know, we want don't we don't want them even, you know, so. Uh, why? Why should we take them? You know, uh, and especially they, they can also say, uh, and they don't want to come to our country. So Angela Merkel, please keep them. You know, you invited them. It's your party, so enjoy. You know. <laughs> and, and the most funny thing is uh, that Angela Merkel didn't recognize uh, with this narrative, with the European solution, uh, that she is already alone. And I can say it because uh, we did a banner for Facebook. To, two days ago, which is saying, which is showing European a map, and all the countries at the map are already blue, you know, and just there is an island in the middle, this is a red Germany, and we are saying all the countries are closing their borders, the only person who didn't got it is Angela Merkel, you know, and this banner was shared by 200,000 people in two days, so this, this, is, this is fantastic, and the people, they, they see it now, and uh, it, it, it's changing even in Western Europe. So um, the Eastern European countries like Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic, but now even Austria become a blue government, you know. And I am very happy that Italians become this government which, which they become. Because all those countries are saying, stop this crazy politics, let us make... Um, Europe strong again, uh, Trump would say, and especially um, defend the outer borders of the European community. So what are the solutions? I have just a few points. I think it's, it's uh, really easy, and I don't understand the Politicians who are always saying, oh, it's so complicated, you know, uh, we cannot control the borders of Greece because there are so many islands and too, so many water around it, you know. And uh, Australia, Australia had the same problem a couple of years ago, you know, and the Australian, they just said, uh, we would uh, like to stay sovereign. Huh? Also a very important word, sovereignty, you know. Uh, they said Australia should uh, stay sovereign, and they did just two things. They paid the um, advertising campaign in the countries from which the migrants come, and they said, no way. You can't stay in Australia if you come illegally. And what did the people? They didn't believe, yeah, because it's advertising. You know, so. so they paid five, six thousand dollars, to some some uh, schlepper, you know, and they went to Australia, and then come the second measure. The Australians bought some some rubber boats, gummy boat, uh, with, uh, with the electronic and steering, and they said, "People, we told you here is the advertisement. No way, you can't stay." They put them in the boat and they send them back from where they come. And what happened was the same. What happened 2015 when the migrants come to Germany? <coughs> And Chancellor Merkel was, was was greeting them, and people were saying hello. It's nice to hear. So they did. They made a picture with with, with their mobile phones, and they sent it to their home countries, and on, on, they shared it on Facebook. And everybody there was thinking, "Oh, we can come to Germany," so, but they did the same in Australia. They said, "Oh, we can stay here. I paid five thousand uh, dollar for a one day trip to Australia, and I am back." You know. So it, it was very fast, the information was spreading also very fast that it doesn't work. And Australia is, is now not facing this problem anymore. So this is the first thing we have to do 
We have to control our borders. And the second thing is, the migrants which will come, which, which are coming to the borders and are not political refugees, we have to send them back to the countries from where uh, they, they are coming. This is, this is really very simple. The second thing is, and this is especially uh, directed to Sweden and to Germany, uh, I said it already, th th those people are here because of, of the social, of, 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 of the level of the social uh, standard uh, they are receiving here. They, they are not staying in Croatia or, or in Slovakia or even not in, in Austria. So we have to lower the level of the social uh, payments on the European minimum. At the same like in Romania, so that the attraction will be lower to c to come to Sweden or to Germany or even to Denmark, <laughs> and that would be uh, the first step f uh, for them to go back to their countries. You know? And then, uh, of course, the third step should be that we will enforce them um, to go back to their countries. And uh, we, from Alternative from Germany, my colleagues, they were personally they visit Syria and they have been heavily heavily criticized by our government and by the media that they are going to Syria and talking to the people talking to the government and making pictures and and spreading it via Facebook why because we experience um, situations that political refugees who already received asylum in Germany from Syria, who said they are politically persecuted in the country, so they cannot go back, you know, because they would be killed by the bad Assad. They did holidays in Syria <laughs> with the travel agency. <laughs> so we said, okay, there is something wrong, you know, uh, maybe there are still fights uh, on local fights, but not in the whole country. And then even official informations come that there are already some 300,000 migrants inside of Syria who come back to their homes because they are safe already. There were another 400,000 from Turkey coming back to Syria uh, because there were no, no more fights in, in their country, <coughs> countryside. So we said, okay, we would like to check the situation. So we went to Syria, we talked to the people and they said, listen, uh, the war is quite over. And please, send us back those young, strong men who are in Germany, because we will, now, we will need them for rebuild our own country. So this is, this is the real humanistic approach, and this is the real help for those countries. If we say, okay, those guys from Syria should go back to their home country and help to build them up. The last point, and uh, thank you uh, very much to Mr. Esperson uh, for what you said before. Uh, it's uh, because we have also do uh, legal steps, and this is our job as, as politicians, you know, uh, to have to start the re migration, re -migration and we have uh, to reverse the current policy, you know. And, uh, of course, uh, one, one step is to be very hard in, in giving uh, our citizenships uh, to people coming from abroad. And you said even that, that you are allowed in Denmark to, to take the uh, citizens, citizenship away from the people, which we are, we are not allowed in, in Germany. I know that they, the, uh, the laws are um, forbidding this because of the history, because of uh, the Nazi uh, time. Uh, so this this wouldn't be uh, possible in Germany, but you have the possibility, so so do it, you know. And uh, we have to be much more restrictive uh, with with giving our passports uh, to to foreign people. And of course, we have to make a differentiation between political refugees and uh, economic migrants. And um, we have, and this is this is really the most important thing. We have to fight the fight 
of, of the words. We have to fight with the media. We have to fight about the narratives. We have to show that we have the truth, not them. We are not the bad guys. We are the good guys. They are the bad guys, you know? So we are the true Europeans. We want a European solution. We want a strong Europe. Mr. Jensen, thank you that you said this is a world uh, premiere here, that uh, it's the first time an <coughs> AFD politician is speaking in, in, in Scandinavia. Uh, this is just the beginning of a very uh, beautiful friendship, I can promise you, because we are already uh, planning a strong cooperation in the European Parliament after the next elections. And I think this is uh, what we have. Uh, what we have to do, you know, it's to establish a strong group of all parties, of all political parties from across the Europe who have the same position to the migrant question, who, the, the true European, um, yeah, the true European. And uh, we have also a very, very nice uh, and very strong support, I know, because I don't know if you recognize it, but the new um, ambassador of the United States in Germany a few days ago he said he wants to support the conservative revolution and this is a very strong sign for all patriots across Europe we have the patriots in the United States and we, they are strong that they are winning you know they are fighting the fake news they are fighting the fake media and they are fighting the NGOs so we will we will uh, win also the, the, this fight here in Europe and this will be Europe of patriotic parties and this will be a strong group in the European Parliament. <laughs> and just along with just last word because uh, we are very often asked as the AFD because uh, we are a German party and Germany is a big country and we will get a, a, a high number of uh, of members in the European Parliament, so everybody is saying, "Yeah, you have to lead this group." Um, and I have to say, um, you know, what you are doing, you are much more longer fighting this fight, and you are so far ahead of us. So you are the light for Europe, and what we can do is we will build the lighthouse and keep you above. Thank you very much. <laughs> take a few questions here because uh, at three o'clock Mr. Christian and his wife will be driven to to the airport. So just a few questions here because uh, in about ten minutes uh, Mr. Christian will uh, re um, retire to retract to the uh, lecture for <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> and uh, the press and journalists will put questions uh, to him in uh, the lecture room. But let's have a few uh, questions. Thomas, you like to put one question? Uh, um, thank you very much. I would like to take this in German, but I can't. Uh, but I can uh, translate into Danish. <laughs> 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 Sorry. No, well, do, you, do you still reside in Bavaria? Do you still live in Bavaria? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, you do. I, I, well, um, you know, the parliament unfortunately is in, in Berlin, yeah. <laughs> so I have to spend some time in Berlin too. Yeah, okay. But, but I am living. Yeah. My wife is living in Munich, and yeah. I, I am traveling. Well, with him. My my question um, relates to uh, to to the situation in Bavaria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because it seems that you are going to grab somewhere between fifteen and seventeen uh, uh, percent point of the votes. Uh, in the coming uh, election, yeah. and Mr. Seehofer is going to have quite a problem. How do you uh, how do you think he'll respond to that? Do you think he'll he'll um, he'll uh, try to do what Merkel has done on um, on um, uh, on a, a federal level to build a also coalition, or will he bite the head of all shame and go into a cooperation with the AfD? What do you th what 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 is what is your estimate of that? What what do you think? 
Uh, the point is, uh, we are in the main questions, and this is very really funny, uh, on, on migration and so on, we are very close to the Bavarian uh, leading party, the CSU, the Conservatives, and also th 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 there are not really a big differences. So if they would behave normally, uh, we, we should, we, we must have a coalition already now in, in the Bundestag, because there are the liberals, we are there, and the so-called conservatives, you know, but they are not. And um, so they would never do a coalition with us now. This is the one, one point. The second point is we would never do a coalition with them now, you know, because we said they did all the mess, they are responsible for all the mess, why should we now, you know, uh, help them uh, to scratch it f f from the bottom? And I think this is a very, really, a very dangerous point for the whole Europe because uh, we will experience a massive, massive crash. And this is for sure, you know, the currency uh, is, is, is nothing worth, even not the papers which are the bills printed on. So, uh, the whole European financial financial system will collapse soon. You know, we are living in a bubble, and this will cause such a critical situation. Uh, and I, I am I have uh, real sorrows that um, it will happen in 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 a situation when already some right wing uh, parties will be on charge in governments, and the system, the old parties, which caused the problems, they will say. You see, when we were on power, everything was fine. But now when the bad populists come to power, oh, it, it crashed. You know, so I would be very, very uh, restrictive uh, with, with going into the government now and say, let's, let's solve the problems you have done. Uh, we are pushing from the opposition uh, already very effectively. You know, so we, we can change a lot of things from the opposition. So effectively, you are going to let them stew in their own fat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Anne Carsten from Denmark. And uh, <clears throat> in your speech, you said something about the Catholic um, uh, community helping refugees. In Denmark, uh, it's the Red Cross who take care of the refugees. I think uh, we have very good. Uh, Hospitals in Denmark, it's run by the state. We have very good, uh, no, we have, I don't know, but we have uh, jails in Denmark that is run by by uh, the state and uh, the police is run by the state and so on. I think uh, <clears throat> the housing uh, of the refugees should not be run by the Red Cross, it should be run by the state. That was um, uh, question number one. What do you think about it? Question number two is, uh, <clears throat> I've heard that in Berlin, uh, a lady teacher, she cannot wear a scarf. And uh, if you wear a scarf every day, uh, a teacher wears a scarf every day, I think she can uh, indoctrinate uh, the, ch the children uh, and uh, <clears throat> affect the children to think in an Islamic way. I think it should be forbidden for a teacher to wear uh, different uh, religious um, symbols. Yes, what do you think about it? It's, it's not, uh, it, it, is, it is forbidden in Berlin, I, I, I hear. What do you think about it? Thank you very much. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure how, how the current uh, situation is. Uh, generally, we are laicistic, uh, laicistic state, and it's it's forbidden uh, to show expressively uh, all religious, you know, uh, kind of clothes and so on. So I, I can imagine that, that this is really uh, forbidden in a school, you know, uh, but not not sure. Uh, but the, the 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 first question is, I think, more interesting for all of us, uh, you know. I am against it that that, that the so I really hard in opposition to your opinion. I don't think that the state should be finance uh, the migrant camps. Because I, I tell you why. If the church says, uh, you know, they, they are all the time claiming like, oh, uh, we have to help those poor people, and we are doing it from heart because this is our Christian approach. And, and they are, at the same time, they are the biggest uh, owner of, of uh, properties. Then I say, okay, do it, do it. If you say it's your job, then do it for free. But don't ask the state for the taxpayers' money. You know? And 
then it would be very, very, very fast solution, you know, because the Catholic Church, you know, would say, oh, this is not so, such a good business anymore, you know. So, either you, you, you are, you know, you are honest, and you are helping, you know, uh, because you want to help, and, and this is also a perversion, because many of the people who are working in the church organizations, you know, they, they are really serving sometimes even for free, voluntary, you know, they, they are really giving from, from their heart, but the organization above is cashing, and, and this shouldn't happen. Okay. okay, so no more question. Uh, round for beer. Eh? Thank you very much. <laughs>